right, we're going back now. <coughs> we're, we're at the end of this sicha of the Rebbe in it's in Chelak um, Dalit, book number four. There's how many books are there? Like forty something. Book number four <coughs> and um, thirty nine. So this in, in book number four, and this is talking about the reason why we're not doing the, the Devar Malchut. I talked to you about this before, because the, the Devar Malchut that the Rebbe made is there's a lot of explanation about the days that um, the Shabbat fell back then in 1991. And so even though that's relevant now, but you always have to keep extrapolating. And they would, these are very foundational speeches of the Rebbe, the Rebbe gave in the early days, very foundational ideas about what is a Jew and how Chabad looks at. <clears throat> so now we can also understand, okay, so what, what is the, what is the Sikha? Let's just make a, a little, a little um, repetition. A summary of what we said up to now. We said that by the Jews, there's this custom to bless the coming month. On the last Shabbat of every month, we, in the synagogue on Shabbat, we make a blessing after the Torah is read, a special blessing for the next month. And this is true about every single month, except for the last month of the year Tishrei, when we do not bless it from the previous month. We don't, we don't, after the Torah is read, nobody stands up and nobody says. So it says, one of the reasons is that the, to, to make this different, to confuse the Satan, whatever it is, nevertheless, we don't do it. So the Baal Shem Tov said that God does it. God himself, he blesses this month and he blesses the month himself. And that gives us power that we can bless all the other months. So the Rebbe explains how does he bless the month and by this week's Torah portion, Atem Nitzavim Hayom Kuchem, that you Jewish people are standing today, together. You're all Jewish people. Atem Nitzavim Hayom Kuchem, all the Jewish people are standing. And he brings from another sentence that we're going to read in a couple of weeks in, in Simcha Torah, the Vayibi Yeshua and Melech Yachad, the Jewish people are one. And the Rebbe explains that what does it mean the Jewish people are one? That God blesses this month. That's God blessing the month with the Jewish unity. What is this Jewish unity? We just explained how important the Jewish people are to God. That they're the ones that determine the whole blessing that's going to come to the year. To the, to the world. So what <clears throat> is the Jewish people? They have to be one. So the Rebbe says there's two types of one. There's called la'achadim and echad. One is that the Jewish people, everyone is different. Every single Jew is different. They're all different, but they have a common goal. They have a common goal to improve the world, to make the world better, etc. And so every Jew, therefore, is different. And this goal unites them. And then there's a, a, a deeper level of unity that the Jews are one body. The Jews are one. In other words, that the Jews, every Jew is the same, exactly the same. Every Jew is exactly the same. We are, like, like you see your friend Fred, here's Fred, that's Fred. We don't say, oh, Fr Fred, hi, I see your, I see Fred's arm, I see Fred's leg, I see Fred's eyes, I see Fred's, you don't say that. You say, hi, Freddie, how are you? Right, the one person, right? You don't say, oh, hi, Freddie's arms, hi, Freddie's legs, hi, Freddie's kneecaps, hi, Freddie's eyes. Of course, that's ridiculous. There's one, same thing, the Jewish people. They're one. The Jewish people are a one big unit. This is wonderful. It shows a tremendous unity of the Jewish people. And it's a fact. The Jewish people are like one big body and how, why you should love every other Jew, unify because every Jew is just a part of the same body. It says the Rebbe, but there's, there's a, a disadvantage to this. And that is that you... You de-emphasize the uniqueness of every Jew. The, you de-emphasize it by saying that all the Jews are the same, which is the truth, as, but you're de-emphasizing the uniqueness of every Jew. But if you overemphasize the uniqueness, then you de-emphasize the unity. 
the similarity. So it says, therefore, both of them are necessary. You have to have both. And this applies, I mean, the, the Jewish people, this eventually applies to the whole world because like we say, we're public servants. We're the servants of all mankind. It's just the only way you can do it, the benefit of all mankind, you can't do it on their terms. You have to do it on God's terms. And that's our, our thing that we're connected. We're the servants of God. But I mean, it doesn't say anywhere in the Torah that we're the servants of man. It says the Jewish people are avodai, that we're God's servants. But the fact of the matter is, is that we're God's servants to make the whole world, especially humanity, improved, make it better. Okay, now we can understand why this arevut. We said that the Jewish people became uh, responsible one for the other is ungave, but this is only when they came to the land of Israel. Right? Why couldn't Moses make this covenant and this unity with the, of the Jews, one or the other, before they went into the land of Israel? I mean, he's talking to them before they go into Israel. Moses didn't go in with them. Why did they have to wait to, to going into Israel to make this covenant that everyone is responsible for everybody else? Thus was yeder that the fact that every Jew is responsible is, uh, how do you say, a guarantor for every other Jew is because as to leave them panemius ticker perush, the inner meaning of what all the Jewish people are arevim, mixed in one the other, but arevim also means to be sweet. Us Oh, no, no, we didn't get to that yet. I'm sorry. Ois kemisht. Arivim also means to be mixed in together. They're all mixed. We said before that if you want somebody to take a loan from the bank, you want somebody to be a guarantor for you. It has to be somebody that has more money than you or something, right? You want to get a job, so you have to, you want to bring a reference. It has to be somebody that's more, you know, successful than you are someone whose name is worth something. So how can every Jew be a guarantor for every other Jew? Even the lowest Jew is a guarantor for the, the, the highest Jew. The biggest sinner is a guarantor for the biggest tzaddik. How can that possibly be? So it says because every Jew has some sort of a good quality and something to contribute that nobody else has. <clears throat> he says that's also, that's what it means that all the Jews are all mixed in together as all the Yidin and all the Jews Every Jew is mixed in and homogenized with every other Jew. So we're homogenized. The, the Tzfei Sugim, these two types of unity of the Jewish people. Like we said, the Jewish people are unified and they are one. Vile because it's kalus bechlal, ken zayin nor ven, as leicht or elyon, <clears throat> leicht. And the only way there can be this unity is if there's a higher revelation of godliness that shines on everybody. Everybody realizes, hey, we're just creations. I mean, we're not, <clears throat> we're not the boss over here. God is creating us. God made us all the same. God made us all different. When ought them or in this light of godliness, this awareness, had meir gaven erst when did this upper light shine? When did the Jews really became aware of the, the, the true godliness when they came to the land of Israel? When they were in the desert, there was a revelation of God and they were receiving bread from heaven and water from a rock and miracles all the time. There was clouds of glory that surrounded them and a big pillar of fire in the nighttime. That's pretty good. You know, you don't get that every day. You don't see that you know, big pillars of fire <clears throat> guiding the Jewish people all, all over the place. But you don't see that. <clears throat> the, 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 when the Jews, and the Jews didn't want to leave, and, and they were right, they didn't want to leave. But who wants to leave this godliness? But the fact of the matter is, is, as soon as they came into the land of Israel, they got this new revelation of godliness to empower them to do what they were created for, to make this physical world a holy place. When they came to the land of Israel, they started dealing with the physical world, to leave mashlim zayin kavan el yona, because God wanted there to be this upper intention of dira b'tachtonim, making a dwelling place in this physical world. 
Tova or it's Ma'od Ma'od. The land is very, very good. And I said, that, just like the Holy Temple, what was the Holy Temple? It was a place where God was revealed. It's different than any other place in the world. There was a place in the world, but it was a place that showed that there's a creator. The same thing is the Jewish people. The Jewish people are people like everybody else. They have noses and eyes and hearts and lungs, just like everybody else. They have desires, they have family, they have right goals, just like everyone else. But it's different. The Jewish people are a holy nation. The same thing as the land of Israel. The land of Israel is a land like every other place. It has the ground and it has agriculture and it has limits and boundaries and you can build houses and etc. Just that, but it's supposed to be a holy land. And the only way that's going to be a holy land is if we reveal it, we have to reveal it. And revealing it means they had to work hard. And they had to have a lot of disappointments and a lot of frustrations and a lot of challenges and difficulties and a lot of self-sacrifice. And in order to do this, a per people have to have a lot of help from God. And people say, listen, I got a good idea. Don't give me the challenge and don't give me the help. He says, but the problem is, is that that's what you were created for. And you not only that, you're created to teach the whole entire world how to do it. That's what it says, tova or it's ma'od ma'od. When the, the, the Jewish people didn't want to go into the land of Israel in the time of the spies, and in the end they didn't go in, but they came back, what is it, Kalev and Yoshua. And they say the land of Israel is very, very good. Not just very good, very, very good. A type of a good you don't know what it is. Serving the creator of the universe. The Reber, therefore, Hatzich Tavka Dan, Mitzad, them, his Kalos from Yidin, only then, when the Jews came in, Angahib, and that's when it began, the Shlemos Inyan from Arevos. That's when it really began, the complete idea of the Jews being included one with the other. Every Jew had to use the power and the uniqueness of every other Jew. Hope he calls that now. And this eventually is going to be revealed in the world because the fact of the matter is every human being is different from every other human being. Not in a, the, the Jewish people, their, their differences have to be revealing God. Their real, their <clears throat> their connection in this world is not so much to the world as it is to the creator of the world. They are the, what do you call it, the, the connectors between the creator and the creation. That's the Jewish people. That's what it means. They're God's servants. They're God's sons, God's representatives. But the world, they're God's creations. They're God's handiwork. And God created everybody different. They say every snowflake is different. Not in the political sense. That's, but that's also true. <laughs> But right? every every fingerprint is different. Al pi kolanal, according to what we said before, vetmen oich farstein. We can also understand the sheichos sufficient the difference between the explanation. The explanation perish a What does it mean? You are standing with what the Baal Shem Tov said that the simple meaning of you are standing. With the Baal Shem Tov's explanation of you are standing. That's this week's Torah portion. It's called You Are Standing. Nitzavim. That the Jewish people merit in the judgment. It's a severe judgment. We just finished learning about these 98 curses that God has the option to give the Jews. In addition to the 49 curses, the 98 curses, in addition to the 49 curses that were in Parshish B'chol Kazai, that God has this waving in front of us, right? You go into the into court. Before you go into the court, there's a big list. You see this big list on the wall. <clears throat> what a hundred and what it is, 47 curses that the judge can give to you. Have a good day. Right? Wow. Jews, well, I don't want to go into this court. Too bad. You're a Jew. Rosh Hashanah. Okay? Order in the court. I want to go home. I, I, don't, I don't want to order in the court. Right? You've probably read the 147 curses that are on the wall coming in. If not, we request everyone to go to their paper, papers will be handed out to everyone to remind us of this. Whoa, it's a scary day. Right? Nevertheless, atem nitzavim. Don't worry about it. The Jewish people, you will be victorious. You'll come out not only innocent, but you'll come out victorious. Nobody's going to, everybody's going to win. You are standing today, the day of Rosh Hashanah. 
Durchdem by means of this, Atem Natsavim, all the Jewish people, Kulachem. Like, what does it mean that every single Jew is, <clears throat> including all the Jewish people, they are unified like one? Then, Mach Nit, Kain Cheshbonos, we make no uh, calculations. What is higher and what's lower? Every Jew, no matter what, a person goes out of his own individuality, his own ego, and you look at the world the way God looks at the world. You look at the Jews the way God looks at the world. We're just a part of the Jewish people, one big body. Then we have the promise that we'll merit in the law. The room, because all the Jewish people is certainly, every Jew certainly deep down is good. And that every Jew certainly deserves a to be signed forever. A good signing and a good sealing for a good and sweet new year. Rosh Hashanah. I mean, if you don't believe it, last, last night I, I <clears throat> appeared in front of soldiers. I have a friend that takes me to these different places. And I played guitar, I sang, and I spoke. And you, you see how the Jewish people, I mean, a lot of these soldiers, they didn't have kippahs on their heads. They weren't, <clears throat> you know, religious at all. I mean, from outer appearances anyway. And you see how everybody just really appreciated and they really, you know, every word. You have to speak in a positive way. I, I, on the other hand, you know, you can't, you know, uh, you know, water down Judaism. But like the, the, the Rosh Hashanah is the day of judgment and we're all being judged and it's very severe. Who's going to die? Who's going to live? And the judge is very austere. But you look at the judge, all of a sudden he winks at you. You say, what? What's going on? He tells you to be quiet. He puts his hand on You look and say, what's my father? The judge is my father. Right? Doesn't make that the case is less severe. The, the case is very severe, and you have to know, but you have to know that he's going to judge you positively. Right? It takes the pressure off of it. So that's the whole, and you, you see that the people that, uh, you know, the, the Jewish people are a holy nation. And there were non-Jews, all the, the soldiers that are non-Jews, they really appreciated it. They really liked that. So the Jewish, the Jewish people are the chosen nation. They're chosen to tell everybody how much God loves them. And the, so we see that there is definitely more than just hope for the world. Oven Pasuk on the Pasuk, Dir Shu Hashem Search God when he is found. But search God where he is found. Where is God found? Zokt. The rabbis say, Elu Asari, I mean, these are the 10 days. These are the 10 days. What happened? There we go. It's not me that's crooked, it's the camera. There we go. It says, These are the 10 days between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. That's what the rabbis say. These are the 10 days between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. Okay. This page gets stuck. See, that's a big problem in here. Okay, these are the 10 days between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. 10 days. In uh, Atem Lashon, the same language also the rabbis say uh, in other places that what is called, <clears throat> they say the 10 days between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, those are the days of repentance. From this one, it says that the days which are between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, this implies that there's 10 days between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. That Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, they are not as much as Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, they, knit, they don't go in the Esra Yom. They're not part of these 10 days. But if you make a simple calculation, you'll see that without Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, there aren't 10 days. The Gomorrah, because it says these are the 10 days, 10 days, it says, look for God when he is present, when he is near. What are the, when is God near? 
When is God present? He's close to us. When? On the 10 days between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. Explains that usually the rest of the year, prayers are heard better if there's a, a minion of Jews. It says on Rosh Hashanah, on these 10 days, that God listens to everybody's prayer, even if you're alone. What are the 10 days? The 10 days between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. It says, but that's what the rabbis say. The rabbis, they know what they're talking about. But the fact is, there's not 10 days between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. And that, that the rabbis say that the 10 days includes Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. So we have to understand what's going on. In fact, there's only seven days between Rosh Hashanah. Muslim and Zagum, we have to say that Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, these, this is two separate things. Was a gate in Tshuva. I'm sorry. We have to say that Rosh Hashanah there's Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur have two aspects to them. One aspect that they're included in the 10 days of Tshuva and another aspect that they're not included because there's not 10 days between them. So if so, there must be the, the essence topic of the identity. What is Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur? The uniqueness of them. <clears throat> What's <clears throat> This is not the thing of tshuva, and also tshuva. So <clears throat> Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, those are part of the 10 days of tshuva. That's what the rabbis say, 10 days between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. There's only seven days between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. Why do they say that the 10 days? So it must be that Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur are part of the 10 days of tshuva. But then also, in addition to that, there's something special about them that they're not in the 10 days of the but there's Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur. So leave Velcha, they zain and Arayin Gerechent in the Esriyamei Tshuva, when them Seder is, so it must be that Rosh Hashanah has something special, Yom Kippur has something special. The seven days between them is not, has, is not so special. On the other hand, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, and the seven days between them, this is all the thing of tshuva, of returning to God. So if so, Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur must have two aspects. One is their essence uniqueness, and also the part that they're part of the 10 days of repentance. Free or dark men of order. First of all, you have to have the, the special service of Rosh Hashanah, and then afterwards comes the thing of tshuva of Rosh Hashanah. That's why it says the 10 days between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. Because the service of tshuva of Rosh Hashanah, <clears throat> which because of it, Rosh Hashanah is part of the 10 days of tshuva, this comes after the service of Rosh Hashanah on itself. Okay, it'll be clearer a little bit, a little bit. Okay, so first, in other words, let's say simply, Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur have two topics. One of them is tshuva, the part of the 10 days of tshuva, returning to God. But in addition to that, Rosh Hashanah as its special thing, which makes it different from all the days that come after it, and Yom Kippur as something special, which is makes it different than all the days become, which are before it. Okay, let's understand what is this idea of tshuva, the 10 days of tshuva, return. Tshuva is higher than all the commandments. Was therefore, which therefore helped tshuva, tshuva helps to farichten, to correct all the pagami for mitzvahs, all of the blemishes which can be incurred by doing sins. Valdi verlangt hecher because tshuva, want to call it repentance, but it really is, it's much deeper than repentance. It means to return, returning back to God. And you have to remember, God is, like we say, creating us all the time. And we forget that. And he's creating us for a purpose that we certainly forget. And return means just to return back to the awareness that we're being created, and even deeper that we're being created for a purpose. That's what tshuva means, return. This idea of return is higher than all of the commandments. Hind the so now, because as Minzak we say, that this whole topic of tshuva, of return, of Rosh Hashanah, 
comes after the main thing of Rosh Hashanah on its own. So it's understandable that the whole, this idea of what is Rosh Hashanah in itself is something that's even higher. This is Rosh Hashanah itself is even higher than Tshuva. Oh, so what do we say? We have the Torah. The Torah and the commandments is God's will. But have the, let's take it even more. We have the world. The world is the creation. <clears throat> and it's a wonderful, it's amazing, miracle creation. Then we have the Torah. The Torah is above the world. The Torah is the reason why God is creating the world, the Torah. <clears throat> but then we have tshuva, return. Return is higher than the Torah. What's the proof? Even if a person wreck, goes against the whole Torah, God forbid, go, this sins all the time. But if a person returns to God, so his sins are wiped out. Right? The sins are erased. There's different levels of this, but nevertheless, that's the general. So tshuva, return, is higher than the Torah. And the special idea of Rosh Hashanah is even higher than doing tshuva. What is exactly this highness of Rosh Hashanah? How can that be higher than not just in the world and not just in the Torah, but it's even higher than repentance, higher than tshuva? What is this special thing of Rosh Hashanah? Making God a king. Omer lofanai, malchios, lichun. It's understood. If there's no king, so there's no one to serve. If there's no king, there's no reason to return and to repent and to do the Torah. As this movement, it's understood that er men, that ayra, men is oiv zich makav, that before a person can receive on himself God's kingship and do the commandments, so it's not relevant unless there's a king. Right? If there's a king, either, I'm sorry, either, this, it's not clear, that before, I, that before a person can do the commandments, right, and say that God is the king, uh, first of all, you have, uh, and that he's the commander of the commandments, so that's not relevant until there's a commander. That's what it says, first of all, you have to accept the fact that God is a king, and then you can accept on yourself God's commandments. So therefore, <clears throat> this, that's the service of doing tshuva. tshuva. Tshuva means that this is, fixes up all of the sins that a person did, fixes up all the decrees of the king. So you, what do you want to do tshuva for if you don't accept that there's a king? I didn't do anything wrong. If there's no king, God is not a king. So the Torah was just made up by Moses and there's no reason for me to repent. What do I, I care about what Moses says? <clears throat> they have to first of all accept that there's a king and the king he's the one that appointed Moses and he's the one that gave the Torah is nit oiskafer because there is a melech is shine erish nor kabbalas malchus in order to do the commandments of God first of all you have to accept the fact that there is a commander <clears throat> this means that with the service of Rosh Hashanah, by making God a king, so therefore you take the essence of God, higher than all of the revelations of the commandments and etc. And this darling, this reaches to the upper will of God, which comes in revelation. I'm sorry, I maybe skip the word over here. Excuse me. There's a big glare on my screen. Yeah. <clears throat> and Rotten was okay, real. Was, was the mitzvahs, was the commandments, Zion and Rot, they're God's will. So you have the, the Torah, that's God's will. Then you have tshuva, repentance, which this fixes up any blemishes you made in God's will. It's higher than God's will. But even higher than that has to be the whole idea that there's a king. And that there's, there's a, a commander that commanded. Varum, because in this level where God is a king, was had gor nit kain sheichas to rotzon, far nemt dort oich nit kain or the avodas etchuva, oif dem hepe charatzon. In this place, which is, if you see that the God has, doesn't have a will, <clears throat> so therefore it's even higher than. I'm sorry, 
if you say the tshuva fixes up God's will, so what do we say? If a person transgresses the whole Torah, so we can do tshuva, and this fixes it all up. What if a person doesn't do tshuva? Then, he, then, then what can you do? It says there's something higher. What is higher? Rosh Hashanah. Hatem nor al giluyim. Over the avodah, the whole idea of making God a, a king, this touches in the essence of God, higher than all the revelations. That's why Rosh Hashanah, it touches even people that don't do tshuva, even people that don't want to repent. It wakes up something inside of them. Wow, there's a king. Right, the king, the commandments are the commandments of the king. And I messed up all the commandments. I didn't do anything. So I can return to the king. But first of all, there's to be a king. And that's the whole idea of Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah is separate in itself. That's the highest aspect of Rosh Hashanah, making God a king. And then there's a lower aspect that it's part of the 10 days of tshuva of return, as we're going to talk about more, God willing, tomorrow. Now, let us learn the Yom Yom for today. Wow, how do I get this thing? Okay. Eh. Eh. It's not what I mean. That's not what I meant. Let's try it again. Here we go. There we go. When Reb Moshe, it was the son of the Alter Rebbe, the Alter Rebbe, one of the sons was Moshe, he was between eight or 11 years old. He was studying a passage in the Gemara Gitin, and there it says, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai said, learn from my personality, my character. <clears throat> Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai was a genius in the Torah, in learning Torah. He also had the book, the Zohar. So he had so much Torah. Rabbi Shimon said, learn from my character traits. So Rabbi Moshe was just that, it was like something like 10 years old. And he didn't understand what that meant because this Rashi says my teachings and the simple meaning means that not my teachings, but my character traits. At that moment, the altar Rebbe came in and said, he used to speak in a, <clears throat> like a, a, uh, a melody sort of. The Torah gave us all fine character traits, even the punishments to the Torah, <clears throat> the curses, the really acts of God's kindness and goodness. The, the two are independent. That we said, when Rabbi Shimon said, <clears throat> learn my Torah, my teachings, and learn my character traits. He says, really, it's the same thing. It's not one or the other. You can't have any fine character traits without the Torah, and there can't be Torah without fine character traits. Exactly the same thing happened to the Semachetic when he was between 8 and 11 years old. In other words, it's possible for a person to learn the whole Torah and be totally disgusting. And it's possible for a person to have really good character traits and not have the Torah. That's what you might think. But the fact is, it's not so. If a person doesn't have the Torah, then eventually it'll mean that he'll do whatever he wants to. He'll do what he wants. And that will... Uh, uh, they say put a big blemish on his all of his character traits. On the other hand, a person can learn the whole Torah, but if he doesn't have a goal to have good character traits, so he can become a very terrible person. So you have to have both character traits and Torah. Each one <clears throat> is necessary for the other one to be full. Have a good day. God bless you all with Mashiach. Now see you at three o'clock. God willing, three o'clock we'll have a class. Shalom Ubrahim.